Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. Glad to be here. Okay. So, Tom, where does the name Furiosa come from? I have a couple of guesses, but maybe we can iron it out and you can tell me for sure. Where does the name come from? Well, we have a bunch of renegade engineers from Seoul, South Korea that really liked the Mad Max movie and uh, came up with the uh, AI spin on Furiosa. So it's Furiosa AI. It's not Furiosa the movie, but uh, there's a lot of uh, similarity. Yeah, cool. And I've seen that you've got some other solutions as well. You've got the Renegade. And what's your other solution? It's all based on Mad Max names, isn't it? Uh, Warboy. Warboy and Renegade. Warboy was our first generation product that was based uh, a vision accelerator. Whoa, hold that. Only 12% of you have subscribed. Do yourself a favor and subscribe for daily engineering content. All right. So we uh, accelerate uh, YOLO models for object detection, motion tracking, segmentation. So uh, that's a, a, a very exciting product as well. But uh, today we're going to hopefully talk a little bit more about Renegade, our second generation product. Right. So that's your new solution. Correct. Why, so I'm hearing a lot of talk about you in the industry, and that's how we came across you uh, here on IP Exchange. Why are you also sometimes called Korea's answer to NVIDIA? Oh, well, that's flattering, but, uh, you know, we are an AI chip company, so that's the same as NVIDIA. They're an AI chip company. Uh, we're based in Seoul, South Korea. So, uh, obviously, uh, an AI chip company in Seoul, most of the, uh, Korean companies so far have been, uh, DRAM or memory based or storage based, you know, Samsung and Hynix and others. Um, and Furiosa is building a reputation for delivering innovative AI chip solutions for the AI inference market. Great, great. So the way I see it, there's something that really sets your product apart, and that's your tensor contraction processor or TCP, as it's sometimes abbreviated to. Could you explain to our audience, what is a TCP and how is it different from what came before it, like the matrix multiplication style of inference? Yeah, I, I, there is a detailed white paper on this on our website that everyone can go get access to. But the bottom line is, is matrix multiplication is uh, two by two and a TCP abstracts it up another layer and allows you to have more uh, matrices connected and, and, and basically makes the tensor core, the primary, uh, element of the inference algorithm. So, um, it's critical to our design. It, it facilitates using less power. It facilitates using enhanced performance and, uh, it gives us our unique value proposition for our AI chip. So your solution, is it just a physical IC, something that I can buy and place onto design myself, or have you got it in a sort of package that is rack mountable on that spectrum? <laughs> Where do you lie? Okay. This is a Renault. Oh, well, wow. that it's a amazing full height, full length gen five PCIe card. It looks like a GPU, slot. doesn't it? Like you'd have in a gaming computer. There you go. And if you see here, this is the ASIC that we have produced for us by TSMC in Taiwan. And these two small squares are the HBM3 memory, which is sourced from SK Hynix. So that is how we do uh, 48 gigabytes of HBM3 memory per card which allows us to do very high performance data transfers. So when, when we go ahead and we talk about AI, often the main metric that we use is TFLOPs or teraflops. Uh, is, is there a number that you can give me that would sort of give the people who are watching this an idea about how fast your solution truly is? Yeah. So our card, single card does 512 TFLOPs. Wow. Six. Uh, with one and a half terabytes per second of memory bandwidth, 
I mentioned the 48 gigabyte memory, uh, HPM3 memory. Uh, it includes 256 uh, megabytes of SRAM in, embedded in the uh, card. And all of that is packaged and is only drawing 180 watts of TDP. Right. And is that a very important stat? Because I've seen that put all over your website. It's all about the 180 watts. Is that pretty important? Well, if you consider the competitive GPUs in this class of product, draw 350 watts of TDP, uh, we're about 50% of the power draw. So, uh, and when you start looking at some of these large language models that require four cards or eight cards, you start doing the math on the power uh, and it, the power operations is substantial. And then power leads to cooling, power and cooling as a operational cost. Um, and, you know, prices of uh, inference processing continue to uh, reduce over time. Right. Do you need to water cool this solution or can you just fan cool it? No, this is air cooled. No, no liquid cooling required. Great, great. Um, what models are you currently supporting on it? Is, is there uh, anything built natively into it? And is there a particular model that you feel that this solution uh, is just made for, purpose made for? So our initial thrust with the Renegade product is the Llama stack. So mm -hmm. Llama, Very popular. Llama 8B runs on a single card. Llama 70B runs on uh, ideally four cards, but can also be used with eight cards, depending on your performance requirements, performance expectations. Um, so our initial thrust is Llama because it's open source and because it is one of the most popular large language models out there. A lot of developers are already using Llama. So, um, our card supports torch.compile, which is the PyTorch uh, connectivity between um, development and the large language models. So if you compile with PyTorch 2.0, our compiler will digest it and be able to run your model on our card. Where, where do you see the, the Renegade actually ending up? You know, maybe a couple of years down the line, can I expect to see it in server rooms and sort of what, what are the main, I guess, applications for it? Where is it going to end up? So, um, today, um, Renegade is primarily focused on large language models, large language model inference. Inference is really nothing more than search 2.0, or some people call it semantic search. Um, basically, uh, taking search to the new level by adding context, by adding additional information to those queries, you know, used to be a database query and now it's a, uh, a, a token, right? And so, uh, Renegade is targeted at the data center and at the edge data center. And we believe that Renegade will end up in a global network of inference processing. So it'll be delivered by many different types of individuals, primarily service providers. And, and service providers are going to customize their large language model usage for their constituency in their territory and deliver tokens per second, per watt, per dollar, the most efficiently uh, in the world. So Tom, we, you say service providers. So I guess, firstly, I'd like to know what a service provider is, but I know that you've recently had a partnership with hosted.ai and conveniently by the nature of television, we've got Narenda from hosted.ai on this call today. So maybe I'll actually give this question to him. Narenda, what is a service provider? So I guess, what do you do? And why does this partnership exist between Furiosa and hosted.ai? Sure. So service providers are essentially 
infrastructure aggregators, right? So a, a good example of a service provider today is, is the hyperscalers in the world, Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud. We call them as hyperscalers or tier one service providers. And, you know, when people, when people have heard the word cloud, they usually associated with these large hyperscalers. Right. But what many people do not know is that there's actually about 10,000 service providers worldwide, of which more than 3,000 have sizable revenues. These service providers have been used to providing cloud services, which is compute, storage, networking. And now, obviously, okay. with the advent of AI, right? There's GPU as a service, AI as a service, inference as a service. And here's the interesting fact. 95% of these tier 1.523 service providers, they have no way to compete in the market. They don't have a software stack to actually build a AI cloud, right? So why does why, so why that matter? Because without that, you won't be able to offer inference as a service, AI as a service, or GPU or NPU and, and Furious SK is like, you know, an NPU as a service. You will not be able to offer that to the customers. And I, why does it matter to their end customers? That, that's actually a great question because, you know, we are all used to a world where there was software which used to run on computational infrastructure, right? We are switching, we are moving to a world where it's models and data running on a computational infrastructure. The computational infrastructure for the software era was CPUs, Intel, AMD, all those companies. The computational infrastructure for the AI era is GPUs, NPUs, and you know several other, let's call it as like fairly advanced computational infrastructures, which these service providers have no way of offering today. Right. And see, as a service provider, what you do is you, you usually buy hardware. You buy a server, you put, a, you put software on top of it. There's, there's, you know, there's several open source software stacks. In fact, you know, at Hosted.ai, the founders, we had a company called Onap, which was essentially a software stack for service providers. Customers would buy hardware, say from a Dell or a Lenovo or a Supermicro, put our software on top of it, and be up and running with the cloud in less than 24 hours. Right? What we saw in the market was, the same service providers now want to offer AI as a service. They want to offer inference as a service. They want to offer training as a service. They go and buy a server, but there's no software stack to put on top of it to actually have, let's call it as a turnkey solution that they can have up and running in 24 hours. Right? That is what we're today. Right? So, yeah. We are a turnkey Neo cloud in a box, right? I mean, like Neo cloud is a term that's used to describe these newer clouds. Literally, as a term, as a term, I guess that's some that's some new age stuff. Yeah, it's Turn Neo. Three, what was it? Neo Neo cloud. N e o c l o u d. Literally, that, as the name suggests, it's the newer era of clouds, which cater to the computational infrastructure centered around NPUs, GPUs, and so on. Right. So these service providers, first of all, they don't have a way to go to market. So hosted AI is the software stack that lets them go to market. You buy a server with, with uh, I mean, let's say you buy a server with Furious hardware in it. You put Hosted AI on top of it, and you can be up and running with the inference as a service solution to your customers. So the huge amount of enterprise customers that you cater to as a service provider within 24 hours. It's huge, right? So, so that's the first value proposition. The second thing that these service providers have been used to in the cloud era is they're used to buying servers which are fairly inexpensive. Right? You can actually buy a server for like two, two thousand, three thousand, five thousand dollars. Put software on top of it and be up and running. But then comes the GPU era where if you had to get a, you know, top. Uh, I mean, let's call it a top of the line GPU. You're probably looking at hundreds of thousands of dollars for a server that has top of the line GPUs, right? So mm -hmm. these service providers, what they're doing today. I mean, those who are in market. They do what I call as financial engineering, which is on one hand, they're paying mortgage on these servers. And on the other hand, they're renting out these servers, right? As long as the rental income is greater than the mortgage, it was a great business. And these Neo Clouds had a ball of a time in 2023, 2024. But come 2025, what's happened is the rental rates have come down, right? So it's at a point where these neo clouds cannot financially engineer the solution anymore, right? So that's why they're looking for technological solutions to it. And 
And the hosted AI, I mean, hosted AI as a software stack, we offer what I call is, you know, infrastructure virtualization, right? Or let's call it as inference virtualization. I mean, whether it be a GPU or an NPU or any other AI infra computational infrastructure unit, we allow virtualization of that infrastructure. And that lets these service providers overcommit and over provision the infrastructure. Let's say you go to Amazon today and you buy a EC2 instance, which is their it's, it's their compute, it's their compute infrastructure. You buy an EC2 instance. The underlying CPU, the processor, is being sold to 10 different customers. And how is Amazon able to do that? They know that the overall utilization of their CPU infrastructure is less than 10%. Right. Switch to the AI world. There's three main use cases, right? There's training of models, there's fine-tuning of models, and then there is inference. Training and fine-tuning probably utilize the AI infrastructure somewhere between 30 and 40%. And inference utilizes the AI infrastructure by I mean, usually less than 10%, right? So what that means is you can virtualize your AI infrastructure and have many more customers. As a service provider, what you're used to doing with compute storage and networking, you can offer the same for your AI infrastructure, right? So this is, I mean, hosted AI provides the software layer to do that, which we call it as, let's call it as virtualization of your AI infrastructure. But more importantly, I think this partnership that we have with Furiosa takes it to the next level, right? Furiosa has the best token per second per watt per dollar offering in the market for inference, right? And as a service provider, what you're trying to do is you're trying to lower cost, right? So clearly you, you get a solution which is far more economically viable on the hardware side. Then you have the hosted AI solution on top of it and both put together, it's really the one plus one equals 11 effect, right? Where as a service provider, you're able to offer a service which is, you know, probably I'd say, far superior to what anyone else in the market can do. And as a service provider, I mean, long story short, it lets you build a much more profitable business model. And most of the neo clouds today are loss leaders, right? For lack of a better word, it's like they are loss making entities because like I told you, the mortgage is now higher than the rental income, right? But with right. Furiosa, with hosted AI, with the partnership and with service providers actually building their inference stack on top of us, we can offer a solution that really lets these service providers become profitable. And they can do two things with the profit. One is obviously, you know, keep keep the I mean, you know, keep the extra money and have a very healthy business, or provide infrastructure solutions in the market, which are far superior and far cheaper than what any other vendor, which you know, most of them are obviously run on GPUs, any other vendor would be able to provide, right? So it's this is a game-changing partnership. We're super excited to be working with Fury yourself, and and yeah, we look the forward to lot of Thank you, Narender, for joining us today. Uh, Furiosa is also excited about our relationship with Hosted AI in the effort to democratize inference as a service. Um, Furiosa is a engine of technology. Our AI chip teams working 24 by 7 by 365 to deliver, you know, leading edge AI inference chips and with software partners such as Hosted, uh, we'll be able to deliver on that vision of inference as a service. Is that what you call we, it? That's what the we, cool kids call it. It's, it's, it's a great term, Tom, democratization of inference, and we're happy to be part of that and really appreciate the partnership with Theory Yourself. Great. That seems like a really good spot to leave it. Thank you very much for joining me today, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.